My name's Eliza Enriquez. I've spent years thinking about what it means to be non-binary and how it can feel like more of a shiny new label than an identity. But for indigenous people, gender nonconformity has been around since time immemorial. Because you're able to grab hold of both of the entities, the female side, protection, mothering, able to see things from many different perspectives. A masculine side represents the fighting warrior spirit. But during colonization, a lot of those we now refer to as two-spirit went underground. Indigenous people who are many spirit have an innate connection to the land and their own people. Now, two-spirit people are making their comeback, a lot of them in the land defense movement, right when we need them most. It'll be two-spirit people of all nations that will have the answer to saving this planet. So I went to Canada to understand how the two-spirit community is taking its rightful place on the front lines of land defense and how their existence doesn't just show us the past, it's helping secure the future for all of us. This is Transnational. So right now, uh, we're heading out to Fairy Creek to go meet some Two-Spirit activists. As a trans person for most of my life, I've found so many ways that I could be outside of my body and forget that this thing is attached to me. And whenever I come into nature, it feels like I can be back in this place. It feels like being able to be whole. The Fairy Creek watershed is home to some of the oldest trees in the Pacific Northwest. Old growth trees are up to a thousand years old and, because of their age, trap more carbon than the Amazon rainforest. Saving them is one of the easiest ways to protect ourselves from a rapidly warming climate. But all of that hangs in the balance. In the province of British Columbia, only 2.7% of old growth trees remain. And much of that is on Vancouver Island. Since August 2020, land defenders have been out at Ferry Creek on unceded Pachidot land to stop Teal Jones Lumber Manufacturing from destroying what remains of these trees. They set up blockades throughout the watershed, finding any way they could to put their bodies in the way of logging. I ask you to step aside and remove the blockade. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or RCMP, are on the ground too, arresting people who get in the way. Matihi is a Métis and Dijiqueer land defender who is closely connected to the Two-Spirit community at Ferry Creek. They coach those who expect to be arrested on how to deal with the police. Why are you all here protecting this? Why are these trees important to you? These lands are connected to the Pachida people. Their land, the land and their bodies are one and the same. To destroy one is to destroy the other. We, we are our lands. We are our environments. We rely on them to live. The Ferry Creek Blockade is the latest in a growing list of largely indigenous-led land defense movements, like Standing Rock and Pipeline 3 in Minnesota. You're upholding genocide, officer, by letting these people build the pipeline on treaty land. What's so striking about each of these is the two-spirit people in the front lines. As an indigenous person, like, we have survived our first apocalypse. And we are now fighting in this world for the next set of generations to come so that they have a right to exist. And they will have access to lands and culture. And a big part of that will be access to their queer culture, mm -hmm. access to the queer parts of our indigenous culture, making sure that they survive. As more and more indigenous movements happen, naturally, um, indigenous queer leaders and two-spirited leaders are gonna step forward and are gonna start taking roles on these front lines because they are leaders in our communities. Uh, they're gonna be on the fucking forefront and on the front lines um, because just as like a queer person and indigenous person in general, you live on a front line every day of your life is a type of front line.
You think about the seven generations behind and everything that they have fought for and the seven generations ahead and what you need to fight for. Our ancestors made a big fight to make sure that we were able to still be here. But when you talk about land back, it's also talking about cultural restoration and the things that go along with it. So having that land back in itself is also a part of being Two-Spirit because you're also regaining that cultural that was wiped out. Land defender Raven Bracupe arrived at Ferry Creek seven months ago, where they met their partner, Whaletail Jones, a land defender from Pachydot territory who's Two-Spirit. Soon after, Raven realized they're also Two-Spirit, all because of the roles they take on at camp. Uh, at least I know I'm here to be a firekeeper, you gotta be Two-Spirit. And then it was when I was appointed, I was like, why me? Like, why? And I got to learn a little bit more about it, and I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> Did you know Two-Spirit folks before you came out here? Not really, no. I knew people, but not, not much. Mm. Not people that identified as, as Two-Spirit. Yeah. Um, or even knew the actual term of what Two-Spiritism was. I found myself kind of when I came out here, it was a lot more known to the tribes out in this area um, comparatively to where I was from. So it was still on, on a learning, learning curve for myself because I don't dress one way, but then there's like, I don't know, traits of both is the best way I could say that my personality is. This August, the RCMP raided many of the active blockades. These lads have never been bought or sold to the crowd. You. They tore down headquarters camp, then they tore down river camp, and they come in with an excavator and they just plow everything down, all the food, all the cooking stuff, the equipment, the utensils, the stores of stores of food and everything. Now, the camps that remain standing are a shell of what they once were. Many land defenders have stopped living at Ferry Creek permanently, leaving Two-Spirit land defenders and their allies behind to fight a much more intimate battle. For me personally, it's been hard to stay at times. For other two-spirited indigenous folks, I can't even comprehend what it is like to have to put up with some of the fucking bullshit here. I really can't. When it comes to morale being low, a big thing is just numbers, right? As the season seasons change and the weather gets shittier, this is no longer like a tourist destination, right? It's now it's more like an active blockade. It does make it a little scary in some ways, but it's also inspiring because all the two-spirited people I've seen here are just so fucking strong. They're amazing leaders. They bring an energy and they are to the front lines that is, that's like undeniable and their, their presence is inspiring. So we're here in Winnipeg. This is the birthplace of the term two-spirit. As a non-binary person, I've always wondered sort of where gender nonconformity came from. Two-spirit isn't the same as trans or non-binary. It's a super nuanced and sacred identity specific to indigenous people in North America. We walk with two spirits, a male and a female, and we understand both spirits. Having that knowledge allows us to be balanced. The term two-spirit as we now know it, was coined by Dr. Myra Laramie in 1990 at a gathering for gay and lesbian indigenous people in Winnipeg. That same year, Charlotte Nolan, a trans Métis Two-Spirit elder, found her own identity in a way she describes as a come-to moment. You know, being someone who's Two-Spirit in the 90s, discovering that, is that a term that you had already? It's not a term that we had before. It was a realization of who we are. It's not a physical thing, it's not a mental thing, it's a spiritual thing. It's a gift that we've been given by Creator. Many indigenous nations historically had their own terms for gender, with some recognizing up to five distinct ones. Each nation had different words for two-spirit people and revered them as community members who could take on both masculine and feminine roles. They were gifted able to restore balance to their communities as mediators, healers, and guides. And then came colonization. Churches and government-run boarding schools not only prohibited indigenous cultural expression, 
they actively drove home the idea that any form of gender nonconformity is an absolute sin. Two-spirit people were forced to trim themselves down to just one Western gender identity, man or woman. They so colonized our people that our own people sort of banned us. The church was the one that had the most influence on banishing us, so to speak. They saw the place that we had in our communities, and they wanted control of our communities. They were afraid of the power they thought we had, you know? We looked at it as gifts, not as power. And they wanted control of our people, so... uh, destroy it, you know, get rid of it, that it shouldn't be allowed. It exists to this day, you know, in some communities that we're not spoken about. People will misgender us and won't allow us into the ceremonies. Do you guys have the ribbon candy? Yes, we do. Oh. oh, the original ribbon candy. I grew up with this. Oh my so god. So I'm going to buy what some. My dad means when he said the ribbon candy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why do you think it's so important for Two Spirit youth to have elders in their life? Merry Christmas. Thank you. Because we didn't. A lot of us were the parent pioneers, so to speak, you know. We take our life experiences and what we've done with them and share that with the young people. I was 40 years old when I found out who I was as an indigenous person and found our spirituality, you know. Not that man-made religion that comes out of a box. That's what has the ties to the ancestors. Yeah. So this is the medicine wheel okay. part of the healing forest. Two-spirit people have traditionally been medicine people. Can you tell me what healing looks like for you as a two-spirit person? Healing from the colonization, gaining that respect from people within the indigenous community that like, hey, we're here. There's all this intergenerational trauma. And so it's healing from that intergenerational trauma and rekindling those lost connections that have been lost over history. Brittany Perkins was adopted into a white family. It was only after she learned she was Métis and started meeting Two-Spirit elders that she found her rightful place. What does having an elder in your life helping guide you, give you knowledge, what does that mean to you? It's very honorable to have an elder, like, kind of within your life to kind of guide you. It's that connection to another person who identifies as Two-Spirit. And so having those intergenerational conversations is a big part of it because you have to learn from the past to be able to achieve what you want and to build success within the future. When you reach my age, you'll say to young people, this is what I've learned in my lifetime, you know? This is what the elders shared with us so that we could grow up and be proud of who we are as Métis people, as Two-Spirit people, as people of the land. There's no greater gift than that, knowing that you're connected to everything that exists out there, every tree, every blade of grass, every rock. You're related to it, and it's related to you. There's a lot of very old trees around us. I call them the ancestors. The energy from the trees needs to be respected at all times. It's not about what class, what gender, what sexual orientation, ability, or what have you. Everybody heals here. We need to say hello. So say hello to that thousand-year-old tree. Kami Starlight, a Nahiao Two-Spirit Land Defender, who also goes by Many Spirit Warrior, has been at Fairy Creek on and off for months. How did you find your own Two-Spirit identity? 
took a long time. Oh, 30 years, maybe more. I go by Many Spirit Warrior. And that really came to me uh, organizing here that the philosophy that the Nahaya, the Cree have about how many so-called genders there are. I have many genders, right? So I'm a many spirit warrior. How does being a land defender sort of connect to your identity as an indigenous person, as a two-spirit person? Being a many spirit warrior means that I'll push around and take hits and shots and whatever else comes at me, right? To talk about our community and talk about my, my experience. What are the sort of responsibilities that come along with that? Couldn't be bigger. Look where we are, right? We're, so we're on patch that territory with a thousand year old tree behind me, but there's barely any of them left. There used to be everywhere, right? When colonizers came here with fish everywhere, everything was in massive abundance, eh? It's all been going downhill, eh? eh? If only we would change everything, then we can slow down the destruction of the world, which is relational to the destruction of many spirit people. It's such a magical place, oh yeah. A good place to slow down and take stock of everything. You come down here and you just slow down. And you can just listen to everything. Yeah, that's why it's magical and it's important to preserve and be here, right? Yeah, and being here in the best way possible every day, just to get better. Yeah. So usually I'd have a feather, an mm -hmm. eagle feather, and I would brush you off with it, eh? Should I put it somewhere? In Wherever you need to. You usually do our whole body. So you can do your head, your arms, your, your heart, your eyes, your ears. So you really, there, the cops are here. Cops are here. Right on time. Everybody's right here. Everybody's right here. Everybody's right here. You won't be able to breathe. Uh, so yesterday the RCMP showed up at the R&R &R camp. They did in fact show up this morning with six vehicles and one paddy wagon. There were at least a dozen officers, one in tactical gear, which really gave off a militaristic feel. You guys are the criminals and the terrorists. What the fuck are you doing here? What the fuck is that about? Stay back. Stop hurting people. Nothing about it. I'm just saying you're hurting us. Two people were arrested on site, one violently. RCMP told us they frequently conduct safety checks and offer help if necessary. They also maintain the arrests were made because land defenders assaulted them. What are you looking for, you guys? Arrests are common out here. Ferry Creek is Canada's largest act of civil disobedience, ever, with nearly 1,200 arrests in total since the spring. I mean, yesterday they tried to show us a fucking gun. But if you get closer, here's what's gonna happen. They already showed up like that. They're ready for something. Oh yeah, well, like, I love how they brought their ERT. They brought their one ERT, so it would just be like a bit of a flex. Okay. Yeah, a little, See? Yeah. What is it like being on the front lines together? It's really nice because then that, that's like a really, you have your companion right beside you and it's not just a person that you're with, it's like literally just your best friend that you get to do something with. And then to be somebody who's from here, it adds an extra bit of, this is why we need to go harder. This is why these lessons need to be a lot stronger. This is why my presence here needs to help out. Obviously, you all are up here and you're experiencing like trauma and violence all the time. Like, how do you two rest and unwind? Like, I remember, like, on the mountain for sure, it was going down to the river or it was going to go see grandfather tree, our grandmother tree, and kind of just regrounding. But I'd go there with my guitar and then I'd just go up there and sing and take my moment alone. We're very, very deep feelers in a way that some other folks just aren't because they can't have both of those sides. So I came to Canada to understand how two-spirit people are fighting for our future. 
and I didn't expect to discover so much about myself. Listening to them talk about their place in the world, it's obvious that being part of any community, queer, trans, or otherwise, isn't just about making space for yourself. It's about all of our connections, to each other and to everything else, and how protecting our planet is a way of protecting those connections. This is who I am, stand my ground, and to be able to fight for something that can not even just help yourself, but help all of humanity to be able to breathe. I have a connection to Erevson and creation. Every tree, every rock, every animal, you know, every human being, and that all has a connection to me and to other two-spirit people. We have all had to struggle for our place in the world, but now we are being recognized and seen for who we are. I'm not gonna shut the fuck up. We're gonna be out there, we're gonna be talking, we're gonna be fighting. 